give you a couple minutes. Uh, boys, just just while I've got you there, it'd be be good. Um, the ones that are on at the moment, just to touch base. I know I've seen a few of you. I haven't seen a few of you. Uh, I know you know some are busier, hitting more balls than others. But just in the last week or two, just just give me something. And also, Matt, like that you guys have maybe done that has been a bit different out there from what you've been doing, you know, over a long period of time with the NA or just training wise, anything you guys have done different or, you know, whether it's gone for bushwalk, it doesn't matter, but something that's just um, that, you know, you guys tried or I know you've been doing the challenges for Matt, so that's been pretty competitive. Uh, Eduardo, well Very done on, on your um, Eduardo took the prize again this week. Eddie Winter. Again. Did anyone get close? Did anyone get close to what was it, Eduardo? 119. Uh maybe like 112 or something. It was 112. 112. Who was who was who was uh, who was behind that? Oh, I, I got 20. That's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got 30, and I was, like, second <laughs> in the state. Yeah, Callum, Callum was second. With 30. Okay. I think that put Eddie, nationally, that put Eddie second or third. Did it not, Eddie? I thought it was, like, fourth or something. Oh, was it? Those boys from New South yeah. Wales. Just, just creaming you. Yeah. 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 That's all right. So, yeah, um, well, Ed... Eddie Winter, give me something that in the last couple of weeks that you've been doing. I know I've seen one of the things, so probably don't have to point on that one. Give me something that I haven't seen. Oh, that was the one I was going to use, but um, I did a bit of running down on the beach, um, and there are a couple of sand dunes sort of at Summerton, um that run up a few of them, which is a bit different. It would have been pretty salt. That would have been pretty tough. Any was it harder than the snake pit? Ah, uh, no, nah, not not as hard as the snake pit, but still challenging. Okay. Oh, good, good job, Blocky. Um, uh, he with that a bit. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, mixing it and... up in with dad. <laughs> yeah, and. Went down to like Walkerville, had some sessions with Cody. Okay. The different different venue. Yeah. That's been alright. Are you going back to yeah. school next week? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Uh, Callum, what do you got for me, mate? I've been giving Jude a good workout on the court. <laughs> um, Coaching your little um, brother. Yeah. And yeah, that's about it. Okay. Eddie Bow. Eddie Bow, you there? Hello? Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh. Waiting, it, waiting for you um, to tell us that something different that you've done in the last couple of weeks. Um, I played two K instead of Fortnite. <laughs> Good development, Eddie. Did you dominate? Yeah. Uh, I, um, no, nah, I was kind of getting destroyed at the start, but you know, slow grind. Okay. All right. Uh, who else we got on there? Donnie. Can you hear us, Donnie? Yep, I'm here. Oh, I don't know, something a bit different would probably be just, you know, going for a few jogs around the local park. But apart from that, yeah, just a few hits here and there. You've been uh, working at the airport again? <laughs> you working at the airport again airport. with landing those, landing those planes? <laughs> Yeah, headphones. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, nah, you know, just helping out the community. Yeah, good, mate. I like it. 
Yep. Good job. Those head, you know, those are crackers, mate. Those must be mentories. They have to be. <laughs> and I could, yeah, and I, they are used for a game, game purposes only. And obviously, uh, cold Landing but, planes. Yeah. And for special occasions. Yeah. yeah. Nice. They had to whip them out. Uh, Ollie, you on there, mate? Yeah. Someone just fall over or fixing their microphone. Just for you. Alex is on the call. Ollie, yeah, what do you got for us? Could he been up to the last couple of weeks? Uh, well, the last couple of runs, uh, bike rides as well. And, yeah, getting out of the house, I guess. A bit more. Okay. Nice. So. Despoia, you've gone from being first on to last on. It's a good, good, good turnaround, mate. Sorry, I was. <laughs> what have you been up to the last week? Anything different? That's uh, what all the boys have said. Something a bit different that they've been doing. Not something the same of what you've been up to, but anything different that you've done? Uh, I'm going for more runs lately, I guess. Yeah, that changed. Yeah. Just in the park, or where have you been going? There's there's like a local school like next to my house, just run around the oval. Yeah. All right. Good job. Good to get outside. You be wearing yeah. that headband, Alex? <laughs> no, that was that one time, yeah. <laughs> I wrote sometimes, though, actually, yeah. Wanted to share that little video with the boys. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good one, mate. It was good. Thanks. Um, all right, boys. But good to get you together again. I know. Uh, well, you know, tonight. Uh, I'm just gonna know that some of you have been tapping into Matt a little bit, uh, and we we have spoken about again with, with some of you that just came on a bit later. I know I got a phone call from a couple about, well, are we doing this or not on Thursday, and I didn't send out a reminder uh, this week. But just remember, yeah, the next. The next few Thursdays, um, you know, unless something's going on with school, I know you're going back to school, that we're going to be online. Uh, and the plan is to even try and get a few more guys to come on and talk to you boys. Um, and I know last week you, you heard from uh, Emma with the sports psych. Tonight you're going to hear from, from Matt. I know you, you guys, some of you have done some stuff in this break with Matt, some haven't, but uh, just that component about you know, the the strength and conditioning side of it. And it's good to hear that some of you guys have just been doing stuff on your own, whether it's going for runs, doing stuff in the sand, uh, all that stuff contributes to um, a bit of extra discipline. Uh, we had the girls on Tuesday and it was interesting. Um, Astra Sharma, who's, she, she spoke, uh, but just not to us directly, but you know, she just made a comment, which I thought was really good in these times, was she just, um, she's, she's very organized, and, and that's what we've been trying to talk to you guys about, is when we have all this time, uh, that I know some of you are going to go back to school, so you may not have the time, but to, to fill in your day and be like, okay, at 10 o'clock, I'm hitting here, I'm going for a run here, I'm doing some exercise here, I've got homework. To, to fill in your day, you know when school goes back, you know, your day is pretty complete. It, when when we've had the last few weeks of what's been going on, we haven't probably had, to, we've had some hits organized, but other than that, it might be one thing. So but to make that day, you know, organized and be consistent, she, you know, she was very much about planning each day what she had on and where she could fit some stuff in and do some stuff for herself. So I thought that was a pretty good message that she shared with some of the girls. So, um, but tonight, just going to hear from Matt. Um, just going to do a bit more of a presentation. I know you've heard a lot from him in the and uh, talk about his um, some more of the S and C around. You know what you guys should be doing more of, or um, could be making more of an effort. So, over to you, Matt. Lovely. I'll uh, quickly just share my screen, and then we'll get cracking.
Can you boys all say that? Yep. 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 So, lads, what we're going to kind of chat about today or tonight um, is kind of just some considerations for you guys to kind of think about when we are training from home. Um, I know a lot of you, like Xander said, are going back to school next week. Um, But for the most part, we really should and will be isolating for at least a few more weeks um, before the restrictions are kind of dropped. So kind of touching base on on what happens to our body um, from a physiological point of view as well. Um, The effects of of detraining um, and, and how hard it might be to get back to our prior training selves. So first slide isn't very uh, isn't very sport or tennis or exercise specific, um, but I just wanted to touch base on you've probably seen something similar like this before, and, and it's how to set up your desk for productivity and, and ergonomics. So how to be produ- as productive as, as possible um, in the space that you're in. Um, there's a few little little pointers that this kind of infographic has pointed out, such as. Um, adjust your chair to, and desk height so that your arms and thighs are roughly parallel to the floor. Um, limit personal decorations, um, noise cancelling headphones and etc. The same concept kind of rolls around when we try and create a, a training environment for home. Um, and not necessarily these considerations, but creating a training environment that is somewhat similar to the training environment that you had back when you were training um, with the NA and, and out privately a bit more regularly, we kind of can kind of take, take the same concepts into consideration. So challenges to our physical health and development, I think this is a pretty good place to start. So from 10 to 19 years old, which all of you are in, um, we call this adolescence, um, you have an increased vulnerability to injury. That's just what science tells us, okay? And that's because of all these different physical factors interacting, our body size, our maturity, our muscle strength, our hormones, our fatigue levels, and things like flexibility, coordination, balance, and things like that. And all these factors kind of come into consideration when we grow. We all grow at different rates. We know this. And I've put that that little picture down there because that's Romelo Lukaku. And for those of you who, who follow a little bit of soccer, He's 15 years old there, and I would argue that he doesn't look 15 years old, does he? Mm -hmm. He looks about 32. So that's just really idolising the point that those blokes next to him are probably 15, but big Romello right there, I don't think he's 15. So what are some considerations? Well, for training we need, and and it's similar to, to life, we need balance. So there's a few factors we need to consider, and you might have heard these before, but I will touch touch with them in, in a bit more depth. But the intensity of the training, so the intent in which we train at, is it is it a high intensity? Is it a low intensity? If you go on a run at 50% and you're not really breathing too heavily and your heart rate stays pretty low, that's a pretty low intensity exercise in comparison to if I'm making you do suicides on the court and you're on your haunches and you're nearly throwing up that's a pretty high intensity the frequency of your training so how often are you training Um, is it three days a week is it seven days a week and also the volume of your training so how much are you doing Um, frequency and volume can kind of be interchangeable they can be a bit confusing but frequency really refers to the amount okay Volume refers to the duration or the time of the training. Okay, and we kind of we kind of have this this uh, this triangle and this where these factors kind of interact with each other and and trying to find a balance somewhere in between this triangle of volume, intensity, and frequency is kind of where we shift between um, when we plan the training. So you might see, you might have put something together, you might not have, um, of what a typical week in isolation might look like. Um, I know for a fact I have, um, uh, both from a running weight um, and now yoga point of view. Um, and I encourage you all to do so. Now, these training schedules look completely different and they're completely individualized, but 
I think it's a really good start to, if we want to consider training balance, we should really start considering, well, what does my week actually look like and how much, how intense and, and how many um, training sessions of what different variety am I doing? So let's touch on this thing called detraining. Um, and you heard me talk about it before, but detraining is pretty simple. Um, it's a reduction in fitness following the removal of a training stimulus. Okay, that sounds pretty fancy. Okay, but it's really losing fitness as a result of me taking away or you stopping running, weights, movement, hitting, anything. Detraining is, uh, it produces a significant loss to conditioning after two to six weeks, okay? And it takes a long time to get back to our former training and com uh, competitive levels um, after. So it also takes, so it also takes a long time to detrain as it does to retrain, okay? So there's kind of this concept by Isaac Newton here, this kind of quote here, well, what goes up must always come down. So our, our fitness level, if we get it to a certain level, which a lot of you have it at a certain level, if we stop doing something, can we take away this, this training stimulus? We stop running, we stop riding our bike, whatever it may be, the result is we are going to detrain and we are going to have a reduced level of whatever that may be. Okay. Now this is going to be impacted by a range of factors when we're in isolation. We might not have space. Okay. We might have a courtyard, backyard. We might not have the resources or equipment. We might not have a trap bar. We might not have a barbell or plates, uh, a bike or anything like that. Do we have court access? So we're we hitting as much as what we used to. Um, do we have access to our coaches? as well. I think this is a pretty big one. You, you all don't have as much access to, to me and, and Sandon and Milo and, and private coaches. Um, so that's also another pretty big consideration you need to consider here. So just some effects of detraining. Um, so if we start on the left hand side, boys, um, after five days, our maximal speed is reduced, okay, resulting in lower power outputs, okay. So our ability to go from point A to point B really quickly, that capacity is reduced. Okay, we move across strength endurance. Okay, a really good example of our strength endurance is our challenge this week, our push-up challenge. Okay, our ability to endure and, and remain um, moving over a period of time um, whilst our muscles not being fatigued. Okay, that's reduced after 15 days. Our glycolytic energy system. Now, don't again, don't get worried about the glycolytic. Okay, you might have also heard of this as the anaerobic system. Okay, if you've done any form of year 10, 11, 12 PE. Tennis is a very anaerobic sport. Okay, it means it you're not running a marathon. Okay, it's short, sharp, little bursts of energy. Okay. So after 18 days, we have a faster fatigue time and less energy over similar time periods. Okay, so that's that real uh, that's that that's that concept of of I might be pretty hot for the first set, but then as the as the sets roll in and by the third, I'm I'm feeling pretty buggered. Our maximal strength is reduced after a month. Okay, 30 days. So that is your ability to do a trap bar at 70 kilos. Okay, for three reps. Okay, so it's our real low rep stuff, but it's really, really, really important, okay, for running fast and, and doing all those things on court. Okay, and finally, at kind of the similar time length is our aerobic endurance. Okay, we, uh, we kind of refer to this as our long distance. Okay, our long distance fitness. Okay, so after 30 days, you are going to be, have a lower long duration endurance. So you're going to not be able to run for as long, for as far. So if you were doing a 7K or an 8K run down the beach, um, like Eddie Winter was saying, um, you probably will not have the capacity to do so um, to the same extent after 30 days. So injury. Um, now, injury is pretty important in this concept of detraining because along with detraining and along with a reduced training stimulus, if we stop running and then we go and run again, we're going to have a pretty heightened 
chance of getting injury. This is something that I really want to hone in on you boys. If you take anything away from this presentation is, well, if I stop doing something, my susceptibility to injury is going to increase tenfold in comparison to if I just continue to do something and maintain to do something. It doesn't have to be training to crazy intensities, but something. I'm going to have a less likelihood of sustaining an injury when I do eventually come back to my full training load. Okay, so just a few things there, boys, uh, in this nice little infographic. So six tips to prevent tennis injuries. We'll establish a basic fitness level, which we all have. Okay. Minimize the week-to-week -week changes. So don't one week go for a 5K run and that's it, and then the next week go for 25 kilometers worth of running, okay, over four, four days. Try to avoid that peak in load. Okay, so again, don't do nothing and then do heaps of something. Make sure you maintain correct work rest balance. Okay, you always hear that sleep is the best remedy for recovery, that and nutrition. Okay, so however often you are working, you should be supplementing that with the adequate amount of rest. Avoid troughs in training loads and be consistent with your training loads. Okay, that pretty much um, says that uh, pretty much touches on point two and point three. Okay, and last but not least, don't overdo it. Okay, which we will touch on in a sec. So overtraining, so the opposite of detraining. Okay, overtraining is when you do too much. All right. Now, tennis is one of those sports where we hit an awful lot, we train an awful lot, and we spend a lot of time out in court. So I would probably argue that we're pretty high on the susceptibility range of um, of being introduced to something like overtraining. Fortunately, because we've trained for that long and, and for this long, um, we have a pretty heightened ability to tolerate a pretty high training load, okay? So you can, you can throw a lot at you guys, okay? And the likelihood of you being able to tolerate that without getting injured is pretty high, which is great, okay? Another example of that is a marathon runner, okay? They have to cover X amount of distance, two, 300 kilometers a week in a training week. Okay, they have a pretty high resilience to this idea of overtraining. Okay, but with overtraining, there, there comes a lot of consequences, uh, both long-term and short-term, um, which, which I'll touch on now. But really, we don't want to get to this stage of, of burnout. Okay. So overtraining is when you fail to recover from a strenuous exercise or training. I'm sure all of you have had that feeling once in your life where you've, say, had a pretty heavy or dense training block and one morning you just wake up and you just feel absolutely dead and you can't get out of bed and you could sleep all day and your muscles are sore. Um, you're extremely fatigued and for the whole day you just kind of lie around and play Xbox like Eddie Bo. Um, um, I actually don't I, play I, Xbox, I, I play PS4. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Same shit. Um, so this idea of overtraining is when we, is when we kind of, uh, is when we kind of fail to recover from that strenuous exercise or training. Um, and, and, and overtrained players um, kind of how to tell yourself between, well, am I doing too much or am I doing too little, is well, overtrained players will have an increase in, in muscle soreness. You won't be able to sleep properly. You won't be able to eat as much as what you usually might be able to eat. You're pretty moody. You've got a shortness of temper. Um, you've got a decreased interest in training. Okay. You've got decreased self-confidence and you have a pretty high inability to concentrate. Okay, what follows or precedes overtraining is this idea of, of burnout. Okay, that's when you just keep doing it. Okay, you just keep hitting yourself and hitting yourself and hitting yourself over and over again. You keep hammering yourself into the ground and eventually you dig yourself this hole that you can't necessarily get out of. Okay, this is a very extreme circumstance, but there has been numerous reports of, of people, um, both in the ultra endurance world, um, 
I actually knew a footy player that, that got susceptible to this idea of burnout. And I'm sure that you guys are at, at as much of a risk as, as what these people are of this idea of burnout. So we don't want to get there. Blank slide. That's not good. <laughs> so some considerations for training in isolation. Well, I'm sure you boys, and we will we'll have a brainstorm at the end of this, but find a way, and put simply, um, find a way to stress the system in a different way to ensure that we get the same outcome. Okay, this is this idea that Sandin announced at the start um, where he went, well, what have you been doing differently, boys? What have you been doing? You should be working hard. Um, in whatever you choose to do, whether that be a bike ride, um, hit balls, run sand dunes. But what are you doing differently in a different way to still achieve the same physical outcomes um, that you want to achieve? All right. So three points that we should consider. Okay. Well, we should create our own training environment. Okay. And that also runs runs through in the idea of accountability, okay, which I haven't put on this list, but I probably should have, okay. Create your own training environment and be accountable for each other. I uh, I spoke to to Jazz Adams today, and she said she had been doing some workouts with with Sydney and a few of the other girls. Um, so I think it's really important that if you can and you have the ability to do so, get together and keep each other accountable and create each other's own training environments. So again, incorporate different training modalities, okay, different things, whether that be kicking the soccer ball or going for a long distance run or whatever. Incorporate different ways of training so that your training doesn't bore you, doesn't get monotonous, okay, and you don't fall susceptible to this idea of doing nothing and detraining. Okay, and also that last and, and probably an all encompassing point to this whole presentation is communicate with your coaches. All right. I am waiting for a lot of you to, to contact me. Um, you know, what's working, Matt? What isn't working? Um, how's, how's the training going? What are you finding, uh, what are you finding hard? Uh, what are you finding too easy? Okay. There should be this constant communication between between me as and Sandon and Milo as coaches, um, to make sure that you know we're not only supporting you um, from a programmable perspective, but we're supporting you in every way we can to make sure that you don't come back in in pretty sloppy shape. So, last but not least, I want to talk about this idea of physical accountability, um, and really, this is. What I want to say here is, well, I've got two images here and, and I challenge you to, and I ask you to, to challenge each other is, well, am I going to come back in pretty good shape like the Alex Demonar on the left or am I going to be absolutely cooked on court when I come back to full training load um, and I've only really got myself to blame? And that's it. So, boys... Around, um, I say go around the circle, but it's not really a circle. We'll go around the um, screens of all you guys, and and I just want to really ask on uh, on this idea of creating your own training environment, okay? And, and some ideas and 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 ways that potentially we can create our own training environment in different ways. So, Callum, I'll start with you, mate. How how do you think? you are now creating your own training environment or um, how do you think and, and some ideas that have spurred from this presentation, do you think you can create your own training environment? Um, well, I'm doing like tennis with Jude every day and then doing the programs you sent me. So that's kind of my training environment at the moment. I guess from this presentation, I could like maybe like have more variation in the programs that I'm doing or like create new or different ways of like basically, yeah, yeah, doing it. <laughs> yeah. 
So if, if I was to ask you right now as well, Cal, like what would be a goal? Um, it could be physical. It can be skill related. Um, it can be mentally related. It can be anything you want. What, what's, a, what's a goal that you kind of had your eyes set on? Um, I mean, I kind of was trying to put on weight. Yep. And that's kind of, it's happened a little bit. Lovely. Yeah, that was it. Donnie, what about you, mate? How, uh, how are you creating a training environment? Um, and, and what's kind of a, a, a goal um, that you've kind of set yourself during this period of isolation? Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm kind of just, you know, doing the program, the exercises from the AMS that you sent me, and then either just organising a hit, someone or my brother. So that's, yeah, my... So what's, a, what's a goal? What's something that you want to kind of come out of here um, does that have to be physical? It can be anything. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Probably just, you know, try and come back like the same fitness that I was before, like even better. You know, like, yeah. Not just, yeah, not losing it, you know, losing my fitness and strength and stuff. Nice. Alex, what about you, mate? Uh, I've been kind of working out with my sister, doing like Pilates to like increase my flexibility because I've been working on that. And I've been going over to like friend's house to do some workouts to change it up a bit, to like get a better environment, push ourselves. Nice. Ollie, what about you, mate? Oh uh, yeah, um, I know I've just been doing workouts at home every day. I'm trying to get out with my mates, have like unsupervised hits and stuff, and yeah, just going out for bike rides and like mixing up, mixing it up a bit. And I know I just want to try and put on as much weight as possible over the, this period, so I can get stronger and stuff. And yeah. Nice, Eddie. Eddie Vaux. Um, I've been organising hits with some people and I've been um, doing the programs you set out on AMS at home. But I think I'm going to like, balance it out a bit more rather than doing more hits than um, doing my strength program. Try to balance it out evenly. Do like half and half. And what's the goal, mate? Um, yeah, to get back fitter. Probably fitter than before the isolation started. Nice. Uh, who else? Lockie? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I think it's like a good time to improve some things. I've got like a couple like technique stuff that I'm trying to change. So I've been working on that a bit on the court and then off the court, just yeah, doing the gym program you sent me and making sure I'm stretching every day and stuff. Nice. Um, well, have I missed anyone? Eddie, Eddie Winter? Yeah, um, I mean, I've been trying to get on court as much as I can, pretty much, um, and I've got a few technical things to work on right now, but as far as the training environment goes, trying to mix it up as much as I can, pretty much, whether it's going to the hills or the beach, um, and even sometimes, like, maybe kicking the footy or playing a different sport, a bit of frisbee, um, but a goal uh, would be to come back probably stronger and fitter, um, yeah, just so that I can, when I come back, I'm ready to go. Good, mate. Yeah, good. Good. Very nice. Uh, is that, Sandin, what about you? Well, I've, I've been, uh, trying to get out and do some more mountain biking. Um, which has been good. So, um, Trying to get my legs built up a bit because they they seem like they're getting smaller and smaller each week, and I think if my legs get smaller, I'll be struggling. They're already pretty skinny as they are, so just trying to build them up again. But when you turn, when you yeah, when you get when you get a bit older, you start losing a bit of bit of muscle mass because I used to be massive before. Now you know I get on the bike, 
just losing that massiveness a little bit. So I just trying to build the legs up a bit. So that's, um, so, you, so that's that idea of day training. Yeah, not enough. That's it. I, I think I've, I, I think I was, I've been detraining the last probably uh, five years. So I'm just trying to bring that back. Um, <laughs> so it's been, yeah, it's been pretty good. Um, interesting, Matt, just, just on that, uh, you know, with, after your presentation there question, uh, I guess for all the boys, I mean, we see you guys, uh, you know, a lot, uh, some of you more than others, but, um, I'm just interested to know, like in the last, because school holidays for most of you has been three, been extended by an extra week. Maybe some of you has been four weeks, but it's been three weeks. Some of you are going to go back to school next week. But would you say in that time, because you haven't had competition, uh, you've had, you, and, and you haven't had tournaments, which normally in the school holidays is what you guys are hanging around tournaments or you know going to tournaments whatever it may be would, would you feel like in those three weeks that you have you, you have more energy you know, like you're just busting to, to to get out there and actually train and get on court and do something would you feel like I guess physically uh, would you have more energy and I guess sustained more energy in that space of time and also I guess the mental side of it as well. Do you feel energized because you, yeah, you haven't been at school, you haven't had to, you're doing some training, but it's not, it's not, um, and that's where we're talking about mixing up. So I'm interested to know, I guess, from the group and go around and ask each of you, do you, do you, do you feel like your energy, you're, you're just up and about in this, in this last three weeks, or are you still feeling like you're tired, you know, you, you, you're not, you bought, I know you, some of you might get a bit bored in the time, too much free time. Where is everyone at in that space? Yeah. Oh, I reckon that, yeah, either probably just got a bit more energy, you know, got more time on my hands. So probably just, yeah, got more energy than usual. Yeah, so do you feel like when you do do, do something, and, and Donny, I know like you're into your soccer a bit, yeah. you know, that's yeah. that's another sport. That, like, have you gone out and kicked the soccer ball at all, or, you know? Uh, like that? I've gone, kicked the footy a few times with my brother, but, yeah, yeah, yeah try to so change that, it up sometimes, good. Yeah, it's good, but I guess the energy-wise, you, you know, you, you – you come out fresh. You feeling you feeling like you're jumping out of your skin a bit because you're feeling yeah. a bit more fresh from from not having so much on your plate. Would that be right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Who else? Uh, Alex. Mm. Yeah, I've been trying. To, yeah, I've been urging to play more matches. Like, I'll be like, like play matches. Like, getting like, I guess. Been like kind of the same training every day, hitting the same people. I guess. So. so, do you feel like you got more energy there? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. Yeah. All right, Cal. Also another standing, like yeah. also like another another layer to that question. Like, who feels like they're training at an intensity that they think they should be training at? Yeah. So like with your with your answer, like who who feels like they're training, like chuck that on the end if you're training at a at a high intensity or not. Oh, yeah, I, I feel that. like I'm training at a pretty high intensity. Maybe not the exact intensity that I was like when I just in the usual schedule, but still, yeah, pretty high, I think. Anyone else want to comment on that? Dan, and I feel like I feel like I'm the other way. I'm kind of bit more like a bit more tired than energy. I feel like I've I feel like most of the day I'm kind of like doing something. Like today I've I've reached strong rackets and gone for a run and done some gym stuff. I feel like I'm probably the other way around. Okay. That's all right. That's 
but is that so you feel like you you filled in your day lucky some in a, in a different way and that's you know that's maybe made you a bit more tired but but you filled it in a lot different than what you normally do yeah 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 how about you milo me i'm non-stop I mean, last five weeks, it's been nonstop, busy as, full of energy. Um, yeah, no, 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 it's, it's, it's been good. I get plenty of time doing physical things now. I'm starting to, instead of feeling like I'm almost 60, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting, you know, down back into the, at least down to 40. Um, soon, if I get it right, I'll be back in my 30s again, and then I'll be catching up to you guys. Bit of a Benjamin Button. Um, so, um, yeah. Hitting quite a few Ks on the bike. Um, actually hitting tennis balls. I've had a few embarrassing experiences over the last um, eight weeks. So I've put a bit of time into actually hitting a few balls, um, getting out and about. So now we've got the afternoon, start getting out with some of the others and getting them training. So no, no, lots lots of energy going here. Um, and Yeah, of course, you get the day busy, lucky, and you, you feel like, um, yeah, it's, it's been a long day and stuff, but you just go ahead and hop in bed and get in you know, one you guys' case. You guys probably, you know, good day sleep for you is around 18 hours. Um, you know, so you probably just sleep the whole time, whereas me, you know, if I can get good, solid five-hour sleep, I'm feeling great um, yeah, it's from there. Um, no, no, I'm good. You're good. All right. Anyone else there? No. Dolly, is, right. is that it for that, or can I kind of move on with a few things? No, you can. Yeah, you can. Uh, that's that's Matt. So unless Matt's got any more to add to that, um, we'll keep moving through it. I uh, I want to potentially just like just on that, boys, just to kind of. I guess in that idea of accountability, um, I think what a good little exercise might be for you guys to kind of take away and, um, and, and look at over the next week until we kind of um, meet up again on, on next Thursday, um, is really consider that idea of, well, what does my schedule look like? Um, and I think a nice little activity for us to do is, I want you all to have a look at, at how much you're hitting and I want to like put a number on it. Um, similar to what we do with AMS, but put a number on, on how much court time you're getting, um, put a number on how much of that conditioning you're ticking off, what that conditioning looks like. There's a lot of different options, um, how much speed and power work you're doing, and then how often you're tuning into, you know, maybe a yoga video or, or mobility circuit or, or whatever it may be. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Matt. Milo? Yeah, um, there is going to be some things moving forward that's going to be happening for everybody. So you get an email shortly on what some of that looks like. It's not going to look like it did before, that's for sure. And we know that we're dealing with um, all these things that are going on. And I know some of you are dispersed up all over the place, which is some of, some of what I think is actually good because I go out to the community courts and um, around the place, and there's tons of people in the courts. So that's all positive. Um, one of the things is some of you have um, got the opportunity that you're doing all these physical things, and for me, I'm I'm not out seeing everybody. Uh, my my best way to figure out what's going on is um, unfortunately, and I know it's a bugbear for all of you, but um, for me, it's um, it is AMS. So when I go on and I see some of you, like for example, uh, we got 17 people that we clock. And, you know, the, as a crew, we're operating between boys and girls at about um, 20 percent. Um, that's 20 percent. Let me repeat that number, 20 percent. So when I look at it and then I go looking at this now to see how many boys have clocked in amazingly, it's amazing out of the guys who is clocking in and who's not. Um, so I just want to cover on a couple of things um, involved in some of this stuff. This is, this is not a compulsory thing. You know, I'm not going to come over and beat the daylights out of you or anything like that or um, take strips off you, but it, it does help you 
develop a few skills that you're going to need going forward in life. Um, as you can see, one of the things highlighted in the news is that you don't make money unless you're in the top 100. Um, it just doesn't happen. Um, it's, in fact, you'll probably see Djokovic and Federer and the amount of money they're talking about giving to players. Um, I think you're at around 700. They're going to give you $10,000 on the tour to hold you over for the whole year. Well, $10,000, if you're lucky, it will be $200 a week. You can actually make more money um, at Job Seeker at Centerlink. The point I'm trying to make here is that um, none of us are going to be on the pro tour right away. If we're lucky, it won't be till you're about 26 or 27, maybe 28. Some of the skills you're going to need is discipline like Jordan spoke about and what Ollie talked about, and they take time to develop. I'll get it. The AMS is actually a good way to actually start putting a few things in. Um, I actually look at it um, once a week. I don't look at it every day because I get sick and tired now of just seeing a lot of gray and not seeing reds or orange or um, blues. Um, you know, from, from my perspective, if it's kind of like having a streak, um, I'm up to about 197 days on my nutrition streak. Um, I think that's running good on my mental mindfulness. If I didn't cross some time zones, I think I'm back up to 20, been as high as 256. But the lessons I learned from that, it's habits. Um, and habits can help with all of us, like getting through this pandemic. Um, it takes a lot of effort to develop habits that are you're successfully going to get through. Um, I watched a good movie the other day. Some of you actually get out here in South Australia, but I watched this movie about a person that spent three years behind a wall during um, World War II, and actually um, they were in isolation for three years. Receive their food, and then they come out one day and smell the rest of the world the war they So the point I'm trying to make, is, um, you know, there's a lot of people that had it worse off than us, and there wasn't no disease out there trying to kill them. Um, so kind of all it takes is recording a few things. It's a good habit to get in the habit of to work from there. So I'm asking you politely and please get something down there. From the guy's perspective, um, the girls are killing all you guys. When I look at it, there's only a few guys actually in the scrum here without, you know, naming and shaming people. So get that one down, and then we'll get to the next point. Um, you will get back on court. Uh, it just won't happen like it was before. So you need to give you some updates. There's obviously, the international circuit doesn't happen before July 1st. So there's nothing happening anywhere else. And even then, there's no international flights. And those international flights probably won't happen from when I was talking to a Qantas rep today um, until about January, if you're lucky. Um, going forward, domestically, we'll be lucky to get out of South Australia into another state, um, probably not until September. So um, we actually, compared to the other states, Victoria still cannot do anything until at least May 11th. Um, the other states are getting out and about, Western Australia. They've got 13 courts going of two people on a court out there, and they're playing match play, getting things done once a week, and their their boys are actually have to go out and get three other matches all right, that, to play against. Over in Queensland, besides getting on backyard court, they're now out there actually getting match play at tennis and getting things happening. Um, they're in New South Wales, they're training. They're actually out there doing things and they getting around the place. Um, Northern Territory's got zero cases, so they're out there training. Tasmania, we know that we're not going to see Tasmania for another three or four years because, um, you know, they've what that's happened in their state, but they are training. So, you know, things are going to move ahead. And when you get back to school and stuff like that, um, you got your schoolwork, I understand, but it's no longer just sitting around and we've got to get back into the scheme of things. And we're going to try and put some things together where we have a variety of match play and stuff going forward. Um, and we'll get there as soon as possible. So the summary is, is that there's a lot of good things that Matthews has given to you and a lot of things that Stanton's talked about, a lot of good things that Jordan's talked about, Ollie's talked about that you've had so far. It's now we, we can't wait to just put a lot of these things in action. It's kind of time to kind of um, 
if you haven't started a habit, let's start putting it together. And it takes about 16 weeks to form a good habit. Um, so it's no reason why to get something going now. All right. Now, if you've got a problem, with going back to the AMS, if you've got a problem with your app or anything like that, send me a message, send me an email. We'll work it out. Some of you I know put it onto your, um, go onto your computer and record things. So let's get things happening there um, before we do anything else. That's it for me, Stelly. Thanks, Milo. Yeah, I mean, this as as you guys know that I've titled these these nights elite habits in professional sportsmen. We're we're not professional yet, and hopefully, moving forward in the next you know, few weeks, we're going to hear a few more. Um, from a few professionals in what they do with habits. But as Milo touched upon, uh, you know, the, the, the pillars of what we're trying to work and trying to put onto you guys with it, with this discussion uh, on Thursday nights is consistency, being organized, and keep educating yourself. Uh, the education component is, as, as uh, both Jordan and Ollie touched on it, um, is ask questions. Yeah, that's the education part. Of it. Whether you embarrassed to ask the question, as they said, and, I, and I, I'm the same. I, I reckon when I was 16, I didn't want to ask a question because I felt stupid. But my, it might have been a stupid question. There's no, you know, now where I'm at, I sit here and I go, well, there's no stupid questions. Um, and both Ollie at 21 playing for the Swans and Jordan at 25 playing Davis Cup for Australia, that both are the same thing. I wish I would ask more questions because maybe I could create those habits uh, a bit earlier than, and, than, than what I did. But they're, they're, you know, they're learning to create some pretty good habits and, um, and they're, they're getting success from that. And you know, they, we, we, we spoke a little bit last week with Emma about controllables and uncontrollables. And you know, you've heard Milo's talk about it takes no talent. Well, it doesn't take talent to, to, to make a good habit. You don't need talents for that. You, that. That's just that's a bit of discipline, and that's a bit of organization and consistency. Uh, so you, you can make all the excuses as you want, and even you know I'm not saying tonight, but you know we could say, well, I I forgot that Thursday night was on, or you know that sorry the COVID. Uh, I feel like I'm coming down with something. I'm a bit sick. I wasn't on. What? You know, that could be good excuses. That's that's all good. If that's how you operate, you know, it, it's things will change. And to be successful in whatever you're going to do, whether it's tennis or whatever you're going to try and succeed in life, you're going to have to have some good habits and form some good habits around what you want to try and succeed in. So that's a pretty important message from tonight. But, yeah, Thursday nights to continue, unless you hear from me, uh, that we're, we're going to have a Thursday off for, for whatever reason. But right now we feel like you guys have enough time if st school starts getting busier. And, again, you guys give me the feedback and communicate with myself, Milo, or Matt. You know, I, I'm going to struggle. I've got this on with school tonight. Not a problem. But, you, you know, the last couple of weeks you guys haven't had that. And you've all been you've been on on the call, and that's great. And again, that's that's uh, as, I, as I said to you last week, I was I was pumped to see all you guys back on again, uh, and hopefully some of the this is education. This is the education pillar. Some of the things I talk about, or Matt, or Emma, or Milo, whoever's on, you guys can gain some sort of insight that's going to help you create a really good habit for yourself. Uh, then they could be on court or off court. Uh, we're, we're we're doing a pretty good job. And, you know, I think as Milo just touched upon, you know, the world's, the world's going to be different for, for a little bit longer. And probably in the, at the end of the day, the world's going to be different uh, and a lot of changes that we're all going to have to get used to. But, uh, and so creating those new habits, you might have some old ones. Well, it's time to maybe get some new ones in this, in this world that we're living in right now. But good to see you, boys. Uh, keep Keep working on what you can do. Uh, again, a bit of self-discipline in your programs. Uh, have a good night. And uh, any questions, uh, we'll obviously be in contact of what we're trying to do from the match play point of view and 
and any other sessions you'll hear from us uh, over the coming, well, next week and even the following week. But uh, I'll see some of you over the next week or so. And um, stay safe, and we'll uh, we'll be in touch. Good job. And thanks, Matt. Cheers, thanks, Matt. Cheers, Matt. Cheers, Matt. Cheers, Matt. Cheers, Cheers, guys. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. See you, boys. Yeah.